All right, as you can see from the from the title, this is a video about what you need to know about the Insta 360 One R before you buy it. So, I really want to like the Insta360. <laughs> I was so excited whenever I found out about it. I was like, this is exactly what I want in a camera. It does, you know, it's so versatile. It'll do whatever I need it to because it can shoot 360 video with this. And... The problem, there, there's been a few problems that I've encountered since I've bought this camera. Hold on. Um, so some of the, the problems. Number one, when you film with a 360 camera, you will get pretty crazy fisheye look and when I watch videos I was thinking oh well, it doesn't look that bad there is ways that you can kind of get around it and it crops in a little bit more and it makes it look more linear um, but you will still get a fisheye look and you know that's just something to kind of keep in mind because I was thinking oh well you can make it look almost like this. It doesn't really, what's even the point of using this? This will distort when you're up close to stuff. So if you're up close to a tree or something, it will look like that tree is all warped and kind of weird looking. There, like I said, there is ways to kind of get around it. You can straighten up those lines and post, um, but just something to kind of keep in mind. This is not like a fix all you know, it will be used for everything. Which is kind of what I thought. I was just being naive. Um, the biggest thing that I don't like about this camera, and the biggest thing that it's just been driving me insane, I want to quickly edit these videos. I don't want to be spending forever sitting on a software trying to, to process these videos. And It, there's a big chain of events. So basically, to when you take a video on either the 360 camera or the... That was actually my video just finished. I'll get to that in a minute. 4K video or even the 360 video, they want you to take it in their format, which is, you know, I, INSV or whatever. The problem with that is that means you have to use their software. Yes, there's a plugin for Adobe Premiere, but I don't use Adobe Premiere. I use DaVinci Resolve, and I like DaVinci Resolve, and it's free, and it's easy, and I shouldn't have to use a whole nother software, pay for Premiere, or have to render a video just so I can bring it in so then I can cut it down. It just doesn't make sense. So it's really annoying. The only way you can get around that is you can use the 4K sensor and you can put it into a uh, MP4 format. But when you do that, you lose the capability of their gimbal mode. And that's one thing, the thing that really bugs me is you can't shoot at any type of slow mode. So you can't shoot um, 60 frames per second, you can't shoot at 100 frames per second, 30 frames per second is the highest you can shoot. And it's really annoying because I want to shoot at 60 frames or 100 frames sometimes because I want to be able to shoot slow motion footage. But I can't do that because this only shoots at 30 frames. The only way I can do that is I shoot in their format so then I have to use their software and render their videos, then take it into my software. It's just, it's an absolute headache. 
let me get into their their editing software. So Insta360 has a uh, what they call Insta Studio or Insta360 Studio, and on the computer it's not that great. It kind of sucks. You can only clip the you can't clip anything. You can only trim from the ends of your your clips. So that's really annoying because I want to take out a lot of junk that's in the middle. I want to trim it down to as short as possible and I want to render it. You can't really do that. You have to render each thing separately and rendering on the computer takes forever and I mean forever. I just rendered a 24 second video and it was taking, it took about 30 minutes to render that video. That was a special case. The one before that took about five minutes to render a 30 second video. I don't know why that one was taking so long, but most of the reason why I bought this camera was to be able to shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second in a small device so I can bring it around with me and film and not have to use my phone. So that brings me to my next subject. To get around using their crappy computer software, you can use their phone software. And it's actually pretty good. Using your phone to edit your videos that are on your camera actually works fairly good. Their software setting keyframes is pretty intuitive, it's pretty easy. Being able to make the videos fast or slow is pretty easy. You can actually trim the videos like I want, where I can trim it into different parts and get rid of the excess that I don't want. And that's really nice. I, I say their their app is actually really good, a lot better than their software from the computer. The problem is the connectivity problems between using your Bluetooth to connect your camera to your phone is a nightmare. And I mean a nightmare. I will spend so much time trying to reconnect and it will drop for no reason. My, my phone may crash. I have a Galaxy S9, so it's not the newest phone, but it should be good enough. Uh, and also, let me go ahead and point out, I have a Lenovo um, Flip or something like that, I don't remember. It uh, has like a uh, i7 core processor, uh, 16 or something gigs of RAM. I don't, it's, it's not a crappy computer. It shouldn't have a problem. It doesn't have a problem rendering any other uh, videos, playing video games, anything like that. And it sucks when it comes to their software. So it's, I don't think it's my hardware problem. I think it's their software problem. Uh, and connectivity between Bluetooth never, is never good. It never works like it should all the time. When it does work, it's usually pretty good. When it doesn't work, which is most of the time, it's really annoying. And this is no exception. So <laughs> I've tried so many times to edit one video. It's a 10 minute long video and I've tried to trim it down to a three minute long video on the, it was a 360 video and I wanted to trim it down, reframe it and then export it to my phone. So then that way I could upload it to my computer and put it into DaVinci Resolve. I couldn't do that because every single time I would open the, the video, it would work fine, but whenever I would export it, it would crash quickly into the exporting pro the process. Every single time I would have to go back in and reload the video to get back to where I was, it would take about three to four minutes just to reload that video to get back to where I was. Um, it's just, it's a nightmare. Like, the, no matter how you cut it, it takes forever. The workflow takes forever. And it shouldn't, it really shouldn't. It's little simple stuff like using, having to use their software, which their stuff could be fixed so, I, I mean, I say so easy, easily, but I'm not a friggin' software engineer, so I don't actually know how easy it would be. Apparently it's not that easy because it would probably already been fixed by now. But, it shouldn't be that hard. They've done amazing stuff and made a really cool camera, really good app. 
it's just the connectivity problems and the app crashing and where they really should invest more time and money and effort is their software for the computer or they should just find a way to bypass all of that and let us as a creator go straight to whatever editing software we want to use not have to use their bogus junky little software on their computer that just absolutely sucks and it takes forever to render anything this is i'm sorry for the long rant but this has been driving me insane for the past week i've had this camera for a week and i haven't been able to produce really any good videos yet because it's just been one thing after another and and it's driving me insane it's 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 like the only way I can get any good videos is I have to spend, I mean, forever, a ton amount of time just trying to render each video. And that drives me insane because I hate wasting time. I it, Nothing is more annoying to me than wasting time. So, <sighs> sorry for the rant, but it was necessary. And I hope maybe by chance this gets to either Insta360 and they can fix their, their crap or maybe, I mean that's what I would hope, or at the very least, if you are interested in buying an Insta360, I just advise you it's going to be a lot more of a headache than it should be. <laughs> and maybe you should consider getting something. Okay.